complement pathway okay they can be three pathways one is classical pathway the second one is mannose binding lectin pathway the third one is alternative pathway so by these three pathways the complement can get stimulated okay now what happens in the classical pathway for a classical pathway to get activated the first important thing is there should be an immune complex okay so once there is an immune complex that means there is an antigen and an antibody the c1q binds to the fc portion of the igg or igm in an immune complex okay so this is an immune complex antigen and antibody the c1q will bind to the fc portion of the antibody okay so this uh, once this happens once this binding happens the classical pathway is triggered what happens is it goes and activates c4 and c2 okay which forms something called c3 convertase that is uh, c4 becomes the part of c4 called c4b and c2 becomes c2b so these th two will combine together and form something called c3 convertase so c3 convertase in classical pathway c4b and c2b so till now the complements that are involved are 1 4 and 2 right now after this the c3 gets involved okay c3 gets stimulated c3a becomes anaphylotoxin c3b becomes opsonin okay in this again to this uh, next forms uh, C5 convertase that is C4B and 2B binds to C3B, C4B, 2B and 3B and forms C5 convertase. Okay. Once this goes and binds to the C5, C5 becomes two things. One is C5A which is chemotactic factor and C5B29 that forms the membrane attack complex. So, uh, one uh, goes and stimulates 4 and 2, 4B and 2B forms C3 convertase which goes and activates the C5 okay so uh, which is called as uh, C5 convert 1 4 and 2 becomes uh, 1 activates 4 and 2 C4B and 2B forms C3 convertase C, this, so this goes and acts on C3 so C4B 2B and 3B forms C5 convertase which acts on C5 which produces c 29 that is membrane attack complex so in a classical complement pathway when you're checking c3 is also going to be reduced c4 is also going to be reduced so this is about classical pathway now coming to the alternative pathway i want you to concentrate on this last section alternative pathway here uh, alternative pathway can get activated by two mechanisms one is it can get activated by itself that is called tico1 mechanism that is there is some spontaneous activation now this is kept under check by few things which i'll be coming to okay apart from this there can be bacterial polysaccharides injury itself aggregated iga and endotoxin which can stimulate so these four things that is polysaccharide any cells which are injured or uh, iga or endotoxins all these four things can uh, stimulate okay so circulating auto activated c3b binds to activating surface okay once this happens it forms alternative pathway c3 convertase we know that there was a uh, classical pathway c3 convertase which is c4b 2b here it is alternative so this forms alternative pathway c3 convertase which is c3 b b b s okay so there is a factor b here so the uh, c3 b binds to that and forms c3 b and b b this is alternative pathway c3 convertase when uh, acted upon by properidin forms the c5 convertase okay this c5 convertase goes and uh, attacks the c5 and it leads to formation of C5A, C5B, which later forms a membrane attack complex. So, here if you see it is only C3, factor C3, factor B, which was important. So, if in alternative pathway you are checking only C3 levels are going to be reduced and C4 levels are going to be normal. So, if this is the situation, that means the pathway is activated by alternative pathway. Okay. So, then there is MBL pathway that is. MBL is, has similar structure to C1Q and it binds to the bacterial cell wall. This also goes and directly activates the C3. Then the saga continues that it does not require 
C1 or 4 or 2, it directly can go and activate C3. So, these three are the pathways by which complement is stimulated in the body, okay.